In this video, we'll see how to program an RTC, real-time clock module with the MSP430 microcontroller. First, we'll see the connection between the module and the microcontroller, as well as the pin mappings of the DS1302 chip on the module. Then we'll look in detail to the DS1302 timekeeping chip's datasheet in order to understand how it works. And by writing C code in Code Composer Studio, we'll set the time on the RTC module and use its timekeeping property to control an LED by setting time intervals. Now let's see our connections between the MSP430 and the RTC module. We are going to be connecting the 5 volt pin of the MSP430 to the VCC pin on the RTC module. We will be connecting the ground pin on the MSP430 to the ground pin on the RTC module. We will be connecting the P1.4 pin of the MSP430 to the clock pin of the RTC module. We will be connecting the P1.0 pin of the MSP430 to the data pin on the RTC module. And we will be connecting the P1.5 pin of the MSP430 to the RSD pin on the RTC module. You can see that on the RTC module we have the DS1302 timekeeping chip and between the X1 and X2 pins we already have the quartz crystal connected on the board. VCC2 pin is connected to 5 volt VCC and VCC1 is connected to the battery. S clock pin is connected to the clock pin on the module. IO pin is connected to the data pin on the module. And CE pin is connected to the RSD pin on the module. And ground is connected to common ground. Now let's take a look at the datasheet of the DS1302 timekeeping chip in order to understand how it works. DS1302 has a clock property which stores the minutes, hours, date of the month and etc. And it also has a small 31 bytes of RAM inside. We already saw the pin connections on the RTC module, but let's mention once again that we are going to be dealing with only three pins to control it with our microcontroller. And these are S-Clock, IO, and CE pins. And remember that these were corresponding to clock, data, and RST pins on the RTC module. If you look at the detailed description part, you can see that data can be transferred to and from the clock or the RAM one byte at a time, or in a burst of up to 31 bytes. Now I'm going to jump directly to that section in order to understand how we are going to make that data transfer. In order to start the communication between the microcontroller and the RTC module, we should send a command byte from the microcontroller to our module. This byte consists of the following. The most significant bit should always be 1. If bit 6 is 1, it means that we are accessing RAM. If that bit is 0, it means that we are accessing the clock module. Between bit 1 and bit 5, we are indicating which register that we are accessing. And in bit 0, if we are indicating 1, this means that we are doing a read operation. If we have a 0, this means that we are making a write operation. And remember that we are making this transfer starting from the least significant bit. So, this way. Now let's take a look at figure 4, the data transfer summary, in order to understand how we do the read and write operations. Before making a read or a write operation, we should set the CE bit high first. At this moment, we should have the clock at 0. And we should be sending our command byte first. And you should make sure that while sending the data, the value on the I.O. pin should already be set before the S-Clock has the rising edge. After sending the command byte after 8 clock cycles rising edge, 
We will start reading the response of the timekeeping module immediately as we have the falling edge on the clock. So D0 will be received at this falling edge, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, and D7. One very important thing that we should take into consideration at this moment is as soon as we send the command byte to the RTC module, we need to set our IO pin to input at this moment in order to be able to receive the response of the timekeeping chip. We'll see that in our code in Code Composer Studio. Similarly, in the single byte write operation, we should set the CE high before sending the command byte and S clock should be at the zero level. We again send the command byte. But after this, we don't set our IO pin to input because we still keep on sending data, which will be either writing to a register in the clock or in the RAM. Okay, this was for writing a single byte or reading a single byte. So what if we would like to send multiple bytes or read multiple bytes, which is the burst mode? You can see that this node is very useful for us. It says that in burst mode, C is going to be kept high and additional clock cycles are sent until the end of the burst. For example, if we are writing to or reading from the clock module, we can read or write eight bytes consecutively. This means that in burst mode, we are going to have seven more bytes while we are reading from the clock. So we should organize our code accordingly. Same applies for the burst mode, right? We need to make sure that we are going to have seven more bytes to be written on the clock module. In the RAM module, the value can change. As you can remember, we have 31 bytes of RAM, but you don't have to write to all of it. You can use three or four bytes, five bytes. It's up to you. Now let's see which addresses we need to use in our command bytes in order to make these read or write operations. In table three, we can see these addresses and definitions, both for the RTC module and also for the RAM. And for the write operation and the read operation, we should reach different addresses. Like for seconds, we need to use hexadecimal 80 for the write operation and hexadecimal 81 for the read operation. And maybe we should mention one more important thing here. While we are writing to or reading from the clock, we should make sure that we are having binary coded decimal numbers. For example, if we are reading the second register, let's assume that it has the following values. Bit seven is the clock halt bit, so it should be set to zero in normal operation. And let's say that the rest of the bits are one, zero, one, 0, 0, 1, 0. If you demonstrate it in hexadecimal form, it will be 5, 2. And if you look at the specifications of that register, you are going to see that these are 10 seconds, which means that 5 times 10. And these are seconds. This means that we have 2 times 1 and it's going to be 52 seconds. So you can see that what we read in hexadecimal form is actually showing us the value in decimal form. So if you would like to write any value to these registers, we can just think of its decimal value. For example, if I would like to set minutes as 32, then I should write to that specific register hexadecimal 3, 2 value. Let's see how we can write this value to the second register. We know that first we should send a command byte. And for this writing to second register, it will be 80 hexadecimal. So write to second register is hexadecimal 80, which means one zero 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 and zero 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 so it tells us that we are accessing the clock module and we are reaching the initial 
address which is the second register 0000, and we are making a write operation. So as we sent the hexadecimal 80 in the command byte, but make sure that we are going to send the least significant bit first. So you will have one here and the rest are right here for the hexadecimal 80. And assume that we are going to write 32 as the second, right? And we need to send 0x32 and that will be 0 for clock halt 0 1 and 1 for 3 and 0 0 1 0 for 2 but since we are sending the least significant bit first the sequence will be 0 1 0 0 1 1 0 0 I'm sure that this explanation is sufficient in order to understand how to write to the registers and how to read from the registers and say for example if you would like to send a clock burst and we would like to write 8 bytes consecutively then we should send the BE hexadecimal value in our command byte and then we can send the values for the seconds minutes hours and etc this whole table in the burst mode if you take a look at the programmable trickle charger mechanism we can see that we have our 5 volts here and we have our battery here and if you would like to enable the trickle charger, we should be sending 1010 sequence in the beginning in order to enable it. And then we either send 10 or 01 in order to select one of the two diode combinations and send 1001 or 1 or 1 in bit 1 and bit 0 in order to choose one of the three configurations for the resistor so these six rows can be chosen for enabling the trickle charge mechanism you can see that this section has only one zero one zero in bits seven to four another important point for the timekeeping chip is the right protect bit before we do the write operations we should set the write protect bit to zero and write protect bit is the bit seven of the control register which is this one so this bit should be set to zero in order to disable write protect now let's open code composer studio in order to apply the theoretical knowledge that we had on the data sheet to C code. You can see that we've already made our connections between the microcontroller and the RTC module. In this first code, we'll be writing the clock values byte by byte, and then immediately after writing the data, we'll read it in burst mode and assign it to an array. In lines 4, 5, and 6, we are defining our control pins. Serial is the IO pin, S clock is the clock pin, and the C is the RST pin. As we saw previously in the diagram, these will be connected to P1.0, P1.4, and P1.5 respectively. Then in lines between 8 and 28, we are defining the read and write addresses that were given to us in the data sheet. In line 30, we define the S-clock function which sets the P1.4 pin high and low in order to create a clock pulse. We can see that S-clock pulse function right here. And we have our send bit function here. Let's go to the send bit function. In the send bit function, we send a 0 in case the receipt parameter is 0, otherwise we send a 1. And in function CE on and CE off, we set the CE pin high and low respectively, which is necessary for starting and finishing the data transfer. Write byte function gets the value as parameter and sends it starting from the least significant bit by using the send bit function. 
Read byte function gets the read address as the parameter and first sends it to the RTC module and immediately it sets the IO pin to input to be able to receive the data that the RTC module sends. We had indicated this while going through the data sheet. As it reads the byte, it saves it in the temp variable. The read burst function is used for the clock module. It has the read burst address inside and sends it to the RTC and after doing that, again sets the IO port to input and starts to read 8 bytes consecutively and saves each element to the clock underscore data array which consists of 8 elements. And between lines 37 and 42 we have our variables necessary for our code. Now let's look at the main function. Line 45 is automatically included by the CCS to stop the watchdog timer. In line 46, we set the P1.0, P1.4 and P1.5 pins as output. And in line 47, we set these outputs to 0 initially. Then we write 0 to the control register in order to disable write protect. As you can remember from the datasheet, this should be the first thing to do before a write operation. Then we enable the trickle charge register and then we write the seconds, minutes, hour and etc. values to their respective addresses. And in line 85, we read these values immediately after the write session. So I would like to synchronize this RTC module with the watch on my PC. So I'm going to set the minutes and the hour. So I'm going to set it to 1621. I'm going to debug it first. And I'm going to click on resume as soon as we see the watch comes to 2100. Okay, now we are assuming that the code is already uploaded. So I'm going to click on suspend. And as you can see that we have hours as 16 and minutes as 21, seconds as 00. zero. And uh, these were the dates and month and this is Monday so the first day of the week so it has values from 1 to 7 and the year is 2021 so but we will not be able to run this code again and again because if it gets a reset it's going to set the date and hour to these values so I'm going to use another code in order to check the values on the RTC module and you can see that in this module we have an additional onboard LED which is standing for P1.6 so it's going to be connected to the onboard LED that we have here so we are going to be able to control it with the RTC module we will have an example here and we won't be writing anything but we are going to be writing the values in burst and according to those values here I set a condition that if the seconds is between 45 and 50 or if the seconds is between 15 and 25 we are going to see the onboard led on otherwise it's going to be off so let's debug this code and we will also be able to check if our rtc module is still working and if we can still see the correct time so i'm going to click on resume and then i'm going to click on suspend in order to check the time so you can see that it was 2255 it seems like correct i'm going to resume and pause again i'm going to resume and i'm going to pause at 08 so it's 0807 it's nearly the same so this means that our rtc module is running but let's keep it in resume mode in order to observe the onboard led if it's going to be on at the durations that we had already specified so let's see it we are expecting it to be on at 45 and 50 so we are at 45 and it's on and it's going to be cleared at 50 and it's cleared now 
and it also needs to be on between seconds 15 and 25. Let's wait for it. Okay, it should be on in two, two seconds. Yes, it's on. And it's going to be on for 10 seconds. It's going to be off at 25. Let's see it. Yes, and it's off at 25. So you can see that with the RTC module connected to our microcontroller, we can do lots of automated stuff. For example, if you are uh, in a farm and if you would like to water uh, some plants at some certain periods or at some certain durations, you can use the RTC module. Or for example, if you have some kind of uh, a solar panel that you would like to rotate it during the day, you can use the pulse width modulation property of the microcontroller and the RTC in order to drive that servo motor maybe. So there are lots of different application areas with this RTC module. This was the end of the video. I hope it's been useful for you. If you have any questions or comments, please write them in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in another video.